Hello, adventurers. I want to take a moment to tell you that all our content can now be found uninterrupted and commercial-free on Apollo Plus. Apollo Plus is a subscription-based service that enhances your audio fiction experience with ad-free access to your favorite shows and exclusive content, while at the same time supporting us all as creators to keep bringing you quality content. Please take a moment to check out Apollo Plus at apollopods.com or download the app in your Google or Apple app stores. Again, that's Apollo Plus, your new home for quality audio fiction. Oh, hey, adventurers. It's me, Zorin, your rogue friend. Your rogue friend with the six-foot-five daddy issue called Lord Palace. <laughs> you know, this was made possible by our supporters and patrons. Corey Fouch, J.D. Rose, Daniel Nichols, Haley Munoz, Brian Dowling, Storm Cohn, and Jolene Frescas. Join us supporting the show at patreon.com slash Dice Tower Theater or by grabbing a super cool t-shirt from dicetowertheater.com or, hey, just tell the next person you robbed blind at a game of cards how they should check it out. Last episode ended with everyone escaping Inrook with the help of the kobolds. Well, half of us at least. Also, Erelyn turned into a dragon turtle, uh, which... Gained a lot of attention. Sophie, Scott Mir, and his brother are also down here in the cells below the arena somewhere, so I guess my plan is to find out what dear old dad is planning next and then to get us out of here. Oh, wait! Shh. Guards are coming. Okay, then. Let's go. Dawn of Dragons, Season 4, Episode 5, Lost Secrets. Zoran was alone. Wandering the dark, old, smelling halls under the arena was lonely, but in the inky darkness he felt a familiar home. He heard voices periodically, causing him to instinctively duck into recesses and the cracked stone brick walls or behind the occasional supply crate lining the halls, shrouded in the shadows. <sighs> Can't get to them now. He had seen where Sophie, Scottmere, and the other dwarf had been roughly caged. At least not tonight. Let's see, what can we find out about what dear old dad is planning, shall we? Why, yes, Zorin. What a smart man you are. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. Stick with me and you'll... Uh, whatever. Okay. If the crew is being held down those stairs, then that should be the dungeon. Which means that those stairs would be up to the barracks. So then down that hall would be any kind of office, if I were to guess. Zorin made his way down the hall, dimly lit by a single oil-burning lantern. He looked at the well on the lantern briefly and saw it was three-quarters full. A ring of sediment on the bottom was mirrored by one barely a finger above it. This was a common line for it to sit at. They won't be back this way to fill it tonight. Looks like it's snuffed out in the morning at the same time every day. Good. He turned the corner and found several darkly stained oak doors. Closed. Each with matching wooden signs burned with a single name. The hall appeared smooth and a dusty crimson and charcoal rug ran the length of the floor. He smiled slightly, thinking Zane would have been proud. He remembered them sneaking into the village storehouse in all not con. Zane pointed out the most important items were next to the office, and the office wasn't too far from the rest of the finished goods. Some people love to be next to their work, and since the most important things are usually right next to each other, <laughs> don't look too far to start with. Zoran smiled at the font memory. <sighs> 
I'll get you out, buddy. I promise. Okay, this is Stokehook. And you are Mortis. Oh. Really? He stared at the name for a moment, part of him knowing he shouldn't be surprised. Soon, curiosity getting the better of him, he gently set the latch with his thumb and slipped into the door. Well, let's see what you have here, Dabria. Hmm. Part of him questioned if it was truly their companion as he began to investigate. The room was very clean and tidy. Various implements of torture lay organized in an open box. He shuddered slightly. <laughs> what are you? <sighs> well, this is awful, but I saw you yesterday. He remembered her face at the edge of the parade. More importantly, Benedict saw something in her. A goodness. <laughs> well, Dabria, you and Benedict are off somewhere probably having a meal, and hopefully not trapped sneaking around with half the Dark Army above your head. Oh, hello, what's this? His hand found a leather journal. Opening it, he landed on an entry from two years ago. This was her handwriting. He was sure of it. Calculated, precise sweeps of red sangria-colored cursive ink danced across the yellowed parchment of the page. 23rd day of harvest, 1520. My partner is leading our dead legions to the Emerald Atoll. A little island with nothing of importance as far as I can see, but Pallas and Deccan are convinced it is of future strategic importance. It's only a primitive human settlement of fishermen, led by a single shaman. One that holds some heathen spiritual significance. An old magic, I assume, but nothing that can stand before us. We must strike following the closure of the trade routes for the winter, to not raise any suspicion from the neighboring elves or the merchants of Port Lafour. I have requested I accompany her as well, and it has been granted. I must admit I look forward to our journey alone together, more than the battle I so crave. Away from all of this. Away from him. I despise the way Dekion looks at her. I will ensure Cardlin watches her back. Zorin froze. What? Cardlin? Sophie's sister? A flood of memory as he remembered the last time Sophie spoke of her. My sister traveled a lot as a sales sword. It would be weeks, if not months, before you would see each other again. She mainly protected caravans crossing the desert back in Kerr. She just never came back. If she did, well, there's nothing left of home anymore. Anyways. I have no idea how I'm going to tell her this. Well, Dabriel will want this back. He closed the journal and tucked it into his knapsack. Seeing nothing else in the room but dark memories, he nodded in respect one last time at where Dabria had come from before leaving the room, returning to the dim hall of doors. Hmm. What's this? Further down the hall, he spied a room slightly ajar, but that appeared to be unoccupied. There was no sign on the outside, possibly a shared room of some sort. Huh. Looks like his office back. Hmm. Peering in, he could see the foul and obscene marking of the Dark Army draped on the wall with an eight-foot map laid out on a large conference table. 
Thirteen chairs were tucked around the giant rectangle, an echoing of unseen attendees in this war room. Uh, let's see here. Inruck, Kerr in Port Lafour, Southern Bloodwood, Wargrave, really? I knew the minds of the Bloodwood Dwarves, but the arenas... Actually, <laughs> that's making complete sense looking at this place. Hmm. Oh, he never did get Viridian according to this. <laughs> Good for them. <laughs> Let's look over the pond here at the new country. Yes, of course, here in Inrook. And Wolfling? Wolfling, really? The... Obsidian Fortress. Oh, no. As they had all feared, at least according to this map, the Obsidian Fortress was under his dread father's control. Gods. Wait, what's this marker? The northern half of the New World Continent was split amongst three areas only known as the Shattered Lands. No one went there save the darkest of legends. A land cut off from the rest of the world and draped in shadow. It was best to leave it in books and stories to scare children into behaving, or to entertain in the dark of the night around a campfire. It was at the southernmost central border, north of the Glen, where it was marked with... The Nether Spring. Okay, Dad. What else? Well, I could have guessed that one. Garnet Keep. Well, better get the hell out of here soon so I can tell Benedict how my dad is going to take over his dad's place. That'll go over well. Hmm. Okay, time for the shelves. The smell of worn, salt-tanned leather and molding pages greeted him. These were records, likely containing historical significance, if nothing else. Thumbing past a few dusty scrolls and folded up leaves of yellowing musty parchment, he found a midnight suede journal. The familiar skull with five dragon heads, within a red triangle burned and painted into the flesh. This had to have been from an insane cleric of the Dark Queen herself. I am totally going to wash my hands after this. I don't even know what kind of leather this... Oh, yeah. I don't even know how to read half of this. It must be magic or something. I... Wait, no. It's a journal. Late winter, 15... Well, that'd be... Realization powered his hands as a finger trembled, framing this date. His pulse quickened as his heart pounded in his chest, recognizing this was so close to... Alanakon. Where were you that night? Let's see. Uh, Tenth Spring Blossom. Let's see. Uh, there. There you are. As if willed from his mind... That was the day Alan Akon was sacked by his father when it all began. Tenth day of spring blossom, 1512. Just the mention of this month makes me want to vomit. Oh, so pretty, they say, as they dance. They dance so pretty for me on fire, they did. Yes, you found pixies. I so love to pluck off your wings, like a child with a locust. <laughs> Today, as we searched south for the refugee children Palace spoke of, we found a windmill by the coast. Only an old man and a young girl were found by Ash de la Rosa and I. Dekion refused to approach the windmill, sending Ash and I to retrieve the girl. Even after flaying the old man, he never told us of those children. Hmm. Well, then Ash presented the girl to Lord Dekion, as the Dark Lord had requested. That girl has a power I don't understand. 
she is connected to death in a way I wish to know more about. The way she just stared at the old man, and how calm he became in his last moments baffles me. His skin fell from his sides in bloody rags, and as I laughed, she didn't move. He didn't move. She stole this from me. I need to feel their pain. My dark queen needs this. She will travel with us now, my little angel of death. In fact, I will name her Dabria. Horrified, Zoran almost didn't hear the voices up the hall approaching. After closing the book in its original position, he darted out the door and hid in the alcove across the hall from the unmarked door. A round pockmarked man rounded the corner, dark robes falling at his side. He spoke to someone behind him. Such arrogance. Lord Decion is most displeased, and I blame him not. Those guards will find themselves serving in the Undead Legion for sure. Bah! No matter anyway, Mortas. They had to have died in the volcano's heart with those kobolds when they caved in. Dead with all of them and their horrible little hearts. I only wish I could have tasted their blood at the end of my knife. <laughs> yes. Indeed, Dark Brother. Come. Zoran noted the sores and boils around the bald man's neck and head as the door came shut, and with it came silence. He hurried back down the hall, his curiosity satisfied, and filled with a dull and forgotten ache in his chest. Not... not now. Not yet. No, God. No. Here. Just... here. He curled up under the stone stairwell far away from the regular path of the patrols. Trembling, he tucked his hood and cloak around and lost himself in its warmth. His breathing slowed, and then he allowed himself to remember. He remembered the shock at seeing Zane, his best friend struck down by Dekion himself. His father, killing Erebus and Lorahana Shieldheart. His father. Who was Pallas? He remembered their hearts low and leaving their home in al Khan so many years ago with El Aviv. Five lost children on horseback. He remembered passing the windmill with the old man and the young girl. He remembered their eyes, her golden eyes, and how they silently pitied those refugees which he was a part of. He remembered the sound of the waves on the coast, the fiery glow of their homes burning behind them in the rain. He remembered the haunting song El Aviv sang as they rode towards Port Lafour to start a new life. How he hated that girl for her pity, for her happy life with the old man far from their struggles. I'm... I'm so sorry. Six children, not five, were changed forever. And Dabria was their missing sibling, sired also from that long night. And on this night, alone in the darkness for the first time in over a decade, Zoran finally wept. <laughs> In the special episode, part one of two, the voices of Zoran and Keldor the narrator were recorded together in a single storytelling take. Also appearing, Dabria, J.D. Rose, Mortis, Harlan Guthrie, and Stokuk, Tyler Cauldron. Stay tuned for part two coming soon. 
Thank you for joining us in this episode of Dice Tower Theater's Dawn of Dragons. Please join us in thanking our magnificent cast for their performance. Their full credit list can be found in the show notes. If you would like a sticker from the show, please leave a review on any podcasting platform and send a screenshot to dm at dicetowertheater.com with a mailing address we can send it to. In the next episode, will Sophie and Scott Muir have the strength to continue the challenge of the arena? And can we finally find our way out of the city of blood and fire? Until then, fellow adventurers, stay safe and remember the oath.